Yeah, this is Bang Bang Right Hill. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for everybody uh, for saying get well, Ray. Um, I was in a bad way, you know. I thought I was in a bad way. It was a funny old, funny old thing. I, I mean, I've been going to my mate's house, Terry, Terry's house, and um, with a couple of other pals of mine, you know, and we were sitting having a laugh. And one day, Terry's got this um, blood pressure machine on the side, you know, the one you put, you strap it around your arm, and you press the buttons, and it, and then it gives you the reading, yeah. So we were having a go there, and mine was like perfect. I think it was something, something like 100 and, what, for 30, over over 40 or something like that, it was, which is good, you know, which is really perfect, 127s and all that. My mate said the same thing. And also my mate Terry said, well, I've got a spare one if you want it. I said, yeah, yeah, I'd love it, you know. And, you know, you're mucking about, you skip back about the machine, and, and a couple of times I've been laying down in my front room, um, with a heat on and all that, and bump, I just nod off, yeah? Um, I think that I'm diabetic, yeah? Anyway, but I just nod off, and I sort of like, go out in a dream, and then I wake up, oh, it was shock, yeah? And I wake up boiling, boiling hot, and my whole body's like a, like an oven, yeah? And I'm shaking, and I think, what well, God, what, what is it? And because this machine's there, you get on the machine, bosh, on the machine, pump, 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 pump. All of a sudden it goes, uh, and then it stops and then it starts again. That means your low pressure, low pressure, uh, blood pressure or high blood pressure. So all of a sudden it went again and I'm watching it go down and it's taking its time and all of a sudden I've got the reading 180 over over something, over something stupid like 184 or something or, or over 84, yeah? That's right, it's 180 over 84. Well look, at it, it's, it's high, you know, and it says you've got to go to, um, Find a doctor up or go to a medical uh, A and E, yeah. So you don't say a lot of notions, you know. I mean, and you do it again, and it goes down. You think, and anyway, it's it's there when you want it, so it's available. But, but because it's so easy to use, it's there all the time, and you're going to use it, and it becomes a pain in the butt because all you think it, you're always changing, you know. One minute it's good, then it's bad. And so the other night. Which was, um, well, yes, there was, yes, I can't get all confused now with times or anything, yeah. So I'm laying, I've had uh, something to eat. Um, I've had, uh, well, because the, the way it's been going, and I think I'm diabetic, I don't take sugar in my tea, I don't take a, a certain cake, so I don't do this, I don't do that, anything sweet, I don't eat, yeah. So I had um, a lasagna or something like that, and, uh, and chip, and a few chips and bits and pieces. And I put tomato sauce on it, which I shouldn't have done anyway. And I felt dizzy. And I've been feeling really, really dizzy for quite some time, you know. And I wonder what it was, yeah. And it's driving me mad because I always train. I train every day, yeah. As much as possible. I train for about an hour and 20 minutes, an hour and 30 minutes, yeah. So I'm always training. I always get myself quite, quite well. And I want to know why I am like I am. I've got four stents in my heart, you know. But I tried to push that aside. And there's certain pills I don't take, certain pills I do take. And they started to get me on. on they started to get me on these things called statins, yeah. Where they give me a, like cramps in my leg, and I tell you about it isn't it, later on. So I don't. I've stopped taking. I'm supposed to be taking. They take all the cholesterol away, all the fat away from from the arteries, yeah. Anyway, so I'm not taking them. And I've been taking them for about seven, eight years, yeah. So anyway, so I'm supposed to have had two heart attacks whilst I was in prison, because my heart is really, really scarred up. I didn't even know. Well, I knew, but I didn't know that they were heart attacks, yeah. And let me tell you quickly about what happened there. So, when I'm in prison, I'm laying in, in, in the cell and uh, I've been uh, powerlifting and I'm laying in my cell and boom, I went. And I'm, wait, and, I, and I'm sort of like dreaming about there's a load of weights on my chest. Loads of weights on my chest and I can't get them off, yeah? And I'm screaming to my friends in the gym to get them off me, and I'm trying to get them off. Now he can't even get them off, and it's on my chest, and it's the pressure. It's more, more pressure, and that is a heart attack. I'm having, a, I'm having a heart attack. Yes, I don't know this, so I find it very hard to breathe. I can't get out of bed to get on the bell because of the weights. This is all in my, in my mind, and I'm breathing, and I, and I don't sleep all night long. Yeah, uh, and anyway, in the morning. I'm, it seems to be that I'm okay. I jump out of bed, go down to the gym. I'm looking after the gym. I'm, I'm training. I'm, you know, I don't think nothing of it. And then I used to have um, a chicken, maybe three times a week, a whole chicken, baked potatoes and everything. Yeah. So like a pig, I'm scoffing in, in my cell, 
uh, just loving it. Um, half a chicken, uh, sorry, half a chicken, whole chicken, and potatoes and a few greens and things, yeah? But making a pig of myself. I'm big, trained all the time. And this is the mount, this is the mount. Anyway, um, I finished, the finished it, we took it outside, uh, put it in the kitchen, washed it up, come back, bang up, bang up. So I'm laying down, all of a sudden I thought, I sit up, I don't feel too good. I sat up in the whole room, room yeah? Went yellow, purple, green, mauve, all different colours, and it was blue. Oh, what the? F I wonder what was going on, you know what I mean? I was all dizzy, and I fell on the floor, and and I could feel myself being sick. Well, in the mountain, they got toilets, so I called myself over to the toilet, and I spewed up. I mean, I, I spewed up so bad, but I was sweating like you wouldn't believe, yeah? Like you pour water over me, I was soaking, soaking, soaking wet. So someone next door heard me vomiting. Are you all right? Well, I said, no, look, do me if I get on the bell and get the screws to come down, where's your mate? So they come down and they said, what's up, Billy? I said, well, I'm not think I've had a night attack or something. I don't feel too good. They said, and then one said, is he sweating? And the other one said, yeah, look, he's, he's soaking. You know what I mean? They went, oh, he'll be okay. Billy, you'll be all right. And they left it like, like that. This is back in, this is in prison, mate. So you've got no chance, you know what I mean? You know, you'll be on the door, they can do whatever they want to do, yeah? So anyway, I started breathing properly and this, that and the other. So I got myself in the bed and went spark out. Now, this is, that was my second heart. I didn't even know. So I get released and and one day um, I'm in my place in Harrow and I didn't feel too good. I felt as if um, I'd eaten something. I got indigestion in my, in, in my jet, in digestion, yeah? So I drank a big glug of a litre of water and uh, then I got a bus to the station, one of his own station, got to, to my mum's in Acton. But before I got on the bus, I went in there and got uh, a drink. But it was a uh, peach peach drink, a peach water drink, yeah? I'm drinking, got, 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 drinking it, going all the way up to Acton Town Station. Acton Town Station got a big staircase, yeah? And I couldn't get up the stairs. And I told the railings to... <gasps> and I couldn't get up the stairs. Anyway... Um, this is the pain I had in my chest, you know. And I got to, I was walking up the hill, so my mum, my mum's got a big hill, yeah. And there's a woman in in, in a buggy with a, with a baby, and I was so um, frightened that if I tried to pass her, I'd keel over on the on the baby. So I stayed behind her, but <sighs> I couldn't breathe. Anyway, eventually I got to my mum's and ran my mum's. My mum came, my mum's at 90, 96, I think, or 95 at that time. So we go on the phone, and I said to my mum, I don't feel too good. My mum says, you look really bad, Ray. So I said, I'm going to phone, phone the ambulance. She said, are you having an heart attack? I said, I don't know what it is, mum. She said, I think you are, yeah? And my mum is medically uh, under, the, under the supervision of the hospital for certain things, yeah? So I phone, she phones the, the ambulance, they come. I open, I, I open the door for them. And they rushed into my mum, thinking it was my mum. But it's me. So I said, excuse me, I said, it's me. I think I'm an heart attack. And in, anyway, he said, grip my hand. I gripped, my, gripped his hand. He said, oh, he said you, you, I think you're okay, you know. But he took me to the ambulance and they put me in his the machine. They said, no, he's got to go to to, uh, to the hospital in Duquesne Road. So I went there and I put his stuff under my tongue and it was all dizzy and dizzy. So... They, then they gave me three stents, yeah? three stents in my heart that my arteries were blocked up. So they opened my heart, put uh, opened the arteries and put the front stents in. They took, sent me away, and I still found it very, very hard to breathe. So I went back and they put another stent in. So they've got four stents. I've been feeling really, really good. Sometimes it's quite hard to breathe because all the all all, all, all what's going on, yeah. Anyway, um, it's I've been here about a year, fourteen months. Probation, uh, they, I haven't seen them because of the COVID. I've moved here, I haven't seen 14 months, I haven't seen probation, I haven't been in touch only by phone, yeah? Also, my phone goes, it's probation. Where you been, Mr. Hill? Where have I been, where have I been? Well, you know, you haven't been to the probation. I said, that's right, because COVID, and I was only a bird called Shirley, and, uh, and I've not heard nothing. She told me she's gonna notify me, let me know they're gonna try and get me off the IPP. Oh no, this is, this, and I'm getting a bit panicking, what's going on, you know? Because no one wants to get a recall for nothing, yeah? So I eventually go down and see them, and uh, I go down and see her, this woman, and she said, well, actually, Mr. Hall, I'm not your probation woman. I think, what's going on? 14 months, this is 
the light, and this is 10 years I've been out, yeah? It's on your probation officer, but tell me about yourself, I'm telling about myself. She said, uh, come down next Wednesday, which was yesterday, yeah? And we'll sort you out with a probation officer, okay? Nice, really nice woman, you know what I mean? Anyway, so um, I was supposed to go to a probation. I mean, I'm sort of, so he came around for a bit, I'm under the, I'm under the machine. I said, look, last night, so, my 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 reading on that on that uh, thing. He said, "Don't take that." I said, "My reading was 184 over 80 something over 90 something." Right? He went, "You're joking?" I said, "Yeah." He says, but "That's." He says, "You're joking?" I said, "No, I'm it's, I'm fighting, yeah." He went, "Ah, don't worry about it. Just don't, don't worry about it." Oh, okay. So I'm not doing nothing. I'm eating. I'm watching telly, and I had and also because I haven't been eating tutty sugar because I'm a bit frightened to touch sugar because of the faintness and all that but I feel dizzy yeah I feel a bit faint so I went and sat on my chair and all of a sudden bosh it knocked me out I was unconscious so I'm thinking you know well not thinking nothing but I'm unconscious someone told me you can go into coma when you're in on on uh, you think you're di diabetic or diabetes di 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 sorry blah, 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 blah. diabetes yeah but I go off I go out you know, and I wake up two hours later, soaking wet, heart's going mad, I'm boiling hot, but I've been boiling hot every night in my bed and getting up and, and, and being in a bad way and chucking all my covers off and drinking a litre of water. I thought, what's going on? It's like, this is going on forever. So all of a sudden, um, I get, jump off the, I jump off the, uh, the couch, just about nine o'clock, I'll get, I'll be in a, jump on the couch back at seven, nine o'clock, nine or something like that, jump in and get on, the, get on this machine. Get on the machine. It's 198, yeah, or nearly 199 over 94 or something like that, it, which is critical, yeah, which is critical A&E. You know, it's like critical. I mean, Christ, so up the top there's a guy called uh, Byron, Baron. And a nice, nice girl. He's married. He's married to Terry's one of Terry's daughter, and sh they're so nice. You know, they got horses. They got be two beautiful kids. Uh, the boy's always around me. He loves me. He's got my, one of these hats. He's a little gangster. He's lovely. Yeah, Baron. Dungeon's not working. He's a twenty-four hour day. Work, 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 work. He's a nice, nice guy. That it works. He works. Starts at six. Finishes at eight. He works seven days a week, he's got his own company, he does uh, landscaping, he does anything like that he does, yeah? Uh, cutting down trees, bushes, he's fantastic what he does, yeah? Baron. So, my heart's crashing, right? And I'm on a 98 or, or, or on a 99, I've I'm thinking it's critical. I've got to go to hospital to get this sorted out because it's no, I'm, I'm now petrified. If I had the machine, I'd have been okay, but the machine made it worse for me, yeah? So I'll jump round outside, I'll get Baron on the phone, can he take me on? This is late at night, yeah? Not late, about, what, 10 o'clock? And someone's been working all day, and he's laying down with his with his wife, watching television, uh, during his night, it's all comfortable for him, it's freezing cold outside, he gets in his van, I'll take you to the hospital. He's flying down to the hospital, I'm only he's flying, this thing is like a jet. Whoosh, he gets me to the hospital quick. I go into A&E, but while I'm there, he's, he's making me laugh, you know? And and, and I, now I don't want to go into A&E, you know what I mean? But he said, go on, you've got to go. So I go into A&E, but there's two compartments. There's one that the ambulance is going, and there's one that you walk in. So I walked in the wrong one. I walked in there, and, and I could see this lion saying, stand there, and this woman's there in, the, in, the, in, the, in the, behind the glass. I went in there, she said, uh, yes. Um, I said, my name's Reminil, boom, boom, boom. Uh, why are you here? I said, I think, I'm not quite sure but I think I'm having a heart attack. She said, can you breathe? I said, well, it's very, very odd. Have you got any pain? I said, no, but it's not good. I've had a heart attack before and it feels the same. Okay, took all my potatoes, wait over there. Wait over there. <laughs> I'm just thinking I've had a heart attack, you know what I mean? Wait over there. Hour later, they called me in, in, in the room, going there, said to the guy, a lot of things, I'm heart attack. Okay, took my blood pressure. Wait, don't don't panic, don't panic. No, let's put your finger in there. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, yeah, okay, don't worry. Okay, do wait over there. Wait over there, and there's these people coming in all the time. Kids, young kids in prams, young kids in buggies. It's crazy, man. You know, the gap is packed, packed with people, and they're all waiting to see the doctor. 
How many doctors do you want? One doctor. One doctor, you've got to see about 40 people, and there's all kids screaming and shouting. It's freezing cold, absolutely bitter with cold. And I'm saying to the guy, look, you know, anyway, he says, what, go, anyway, I've been there two hours now. Then I've got to take a water sample, which I take. And I'm thinking, what's going on here? You know what I mean? I'm not supposed to be, this is supposed to be A and E. This is supposed to be, I'm telling him, I've just had a heart attack. You think they say, you've got to go to the big A and E, the wrong part of the part. No, you've got to wait there. So he comes up and he goes, oh, you've got, got to wait around the corner. He didn't tell me that before, got to wait around the corner. Go around the corner. There's about five people. There's a woman there with a little girl in a pushchair, in a buggy, and she's coughing every couple of seconds, really bad, crying, coughing. You think they'd get her or take her somewhere that she can, that they can look, examine her, yeah? But she's been there an hour or two hours. I'm saying, well, she's been there two hours. How am I going to be there? And I was there for ages. It seemed like, you know, every time a guy come out, the doctor, nice, nice guy, man. A big African guy, nice guy. You could see the pressure he was under. Everybody around him, it's just one doctor. And I'm, and, and people were talking there, people with bad thumbs, you know, uh, number one with a bad little, they all got little ankles, or something on their ankles or something on their arms, or this, and there's me. So this woman said, why, why are you? I said, well, I, I'm here because I think I've got a heart attack. She said, what? You shouldn't be here. She said, you've got to be in a... You shouldn't be here. You should, this is ridiculous. Anyway, he, so eventually I said to him, look, have I missed my turn because I went to the toilet? He said, what's your name? I told him. He said, no, no, no you haven't missed it at all. So I'm there now for four hours. I'm sitting there, all told, for four hours, watching people come in, watching people go out, bad foot, bad thumbs, whatever. Right? And that woman's still there with that little girl. I'm going, oh, I can't believe this. This is supposed to be heart attack. Straight away, you're supposed to go somewhere to be looked at. I've been there four hours. Imagine, imagine, imagine him saying to me, oh, why are you here? I said, a heart attack. He said, but I said, it's a good job that I didn't have a heart attack. I'd have been dead. You know what I mean? So I walk in, he comes, he looks at me, he points at me, because I've already talked to him. He went, like that, come here like that, like, I went, okay. He took me and he went, told me all my, told him everything. He went, you shouldn't be here anyway. You should be in the main A&E. &E. He said, look, do you want to go to the main A&E? I said, yes, of course I do. That's what I'm here for. He went, no, I really apologise. I said, you haven't got me sorry. I said, because this is, this is your job. You don't know, you know what I mean? But it's not that, it, it, his fault. It's the person that already seen you before and you told him, you know. You, you just think you're having an heart attack and then just probably I'll put you outside. It seems to be, they don't care, they just get you in, get you out, it's like, a, it's, it's, mad, it's mad. So when I eventually go to uh, A&E, right, and I get got this paperwork, give it to this woman, they're with me within, what, five minutes? Take me in there, uh, blood test, just everything, yeah? And um, they're saying this and saying that, and they go, look, can you wait in the waiting room? because we need to see you, talk to you about the doctors coming to see you, but I've done my blood, they're doing all my tests and everything. So it's just terrific. That's what it should have happened if I'd gone to the main A&E, but the only reason you go to the main A&E is you come in by ambulance, you know, or you walk in, but I didn't really know that was the one, there was two A&Es. This is in Hill in the Hospital, yeah? And it's got to be pulled down Hill in the Hospital or they're doing something to it, because Hill in the Hospital, I tell you, when I walked in there, it's absolutely terrible, mate, it's filthy. All the time, Things have fallen off. I feel sorry for the people that work in there. They're working in terrible, terrible conditions, you know, but they tried what they, they tried to hide us, yeah? So I'm in A&E. &E. They put me in a, a, a big uh, room, yeah? A waiting room. I go in there, and I can smell it. It's, it's, it smells really, really bad, you know I mean? Not someone's messed in there or whatever. Right? As I was sitting down, I thought, what's that? There's a video, I've done a video of it, I put it on my, uh, on, on, uh, it's, it's on my, my WhatsApp and, and other things, yeah. There's a guy, I want to put it on Facebook, there's a guy laying down, a tramp, I don't blame him, they've got nowhere to live, they've got nowhere to, uh, uh, freezing cold, they've done, they've got no food, they've got, uh, it's freezing outside, and I, and it, A and E upset them, told them to come in and lay in there, yeah, but it's not really a sort of thing, you want in the waiting room. You're, I mean, there's all people in there with heart conditions and this, that, and the other. They're laying on four or five chairs, you know, and they're laying there, got long hair, 
Uh, the legs are filthy. And I felt sorry for this young girl, yeah? She could have been old, what, 21, 22? And she's like, she's got a cigarette, mate. I went, don't smoke, darling. And, and then all of a sudden she run out, but she come back in about, what, 20 minutes later, she walks out with some other guys, come back in, and she's sitting there going, talking to herself, really talking to herself, went outside, went into the A&E part of it, and come back with about four or five blankets. And now they all got blankets, they're laying down, four or five of them on big long chairs, yeah? Sleeping in there, and you think, Christ, what's going on? <laughs> you can't blame them, they're freezing cold, but this is A and E. This is people that have got terrible problems, and they're in there snoring and fighting, and this and that. You can't believe it. But before that, let me tell you what happened before that in the other A and E, right? So I'm sitting there, all of a sudden, crash, the old bull come rushing in. They've got this geezer handcuffed, like a Somalian guy, Jamaican guy, I don't know what he is, yeah. They've got him handcuffed up. I went, what's happening there? And they can, they can see he's been stabbed. He's got blood all over his... And he's got handcuffed. He's got blood all over his front, yeah? So they're taking him in, yeah? Into the A &E, other A&E department where I should have been going, yeah? And behind him, about, what, 20 minutes later, comes us another Somalian with his hands. He's got a big cloth on his hand where he's shouting out, I've been sad, stabbed four times in the hand where he's trying to protect himself and the knife's gone through his hand it's the geezer that's just walked in that's been stabbed in the front this one has stabbed him now the geezer's shouting and screaming and the old bill come and take him out and they're talking to him and letting go anyway something's happened so then when we're in the, when we're in the A&E the other big part of it he's there with a Somalian woman shouting like anything what can he do? You want to go mad, but you can't because you're going to get the police. It's going to be this, that, and the other. And I'm an IPP. I've got to keep quiet. His hands all cut up, this, that, and the other. He's, he's waiting to get stitched up or whatever. He's getting stitched up. The bird's going mad. All of a sudden, the woman comes in. Um, something, something, hill. Something, peel hill? And I said, do you want Rayo, love? She went, oh, uh, what is your name? I said, Rayo. She went, uh, is that your name? And I couldn't even see nothing. It was so tiny, I said, I can't see. And she put, give it to someone, she says, yeah, right here, yeah. I said, I'm right here, yeah. And she took me into the room. And she was, um, she was lovely, man. She had a scarf around her things, you know, whatever she was, Muslim or whatever. She was absolutely stunning in a way, a personality wise, yeah. And the way she treated me, the way she talked to me, yeah. And she was so nice, you know. She made me feel at ease, yeah. Really feel at ease. And then she told me to go into uh, a big part of the A&E and they sorted me all out and put me under a blood test, the same thing, put me around the arm, I come up 127 over something like 40 or 36, which is perfect, yeah? Uh, tested this, tested that, say, look, your, your heart is perfect, there's nothing wrong with you, you can go home. And then uh, she came over to me and she told me, and she said, look, um, this is the doctor, she said, what are we gonna do? Uh, you're going to get in touch with your doctor. He's been taking blood samples, Mr. I said, well, I said, yeah, uh, to find out your diabetic. We can't do it as such. But anyway, they could have done but they Quick, my finger, I wasn't diabetic, yeah? But they said, we can't really tell by that. But if you want to, I said, he said, your doctor's already done it, took your diabetic uh, blood and all that, that and the other. So the, phone him up tomorrow and find out if you've got results on it, yeah? Because we think that it's not your heart, definitely not your heart. But what we're going to do, we want you to phone up your your uh, doctor, tell your doctor, right, uh, to get in touch with the um, Ellendon Hospital, the people that do the heart, yeah? And it's, uh, so they're gonna get in touch with him. So I go there for 48 hours, stay there for 48 hours, so they can test, put all tests on me, and they put something around in my chest, yeah? to test what happens to me at night time in bits and pieces so when I'm sleeping. So that's good. I'm having that maybe in a week, two weeks time, yeah? So it's pressure, I think it's a lot of it's pressure, you know, and then so I got probation at 12.30. I don't get back into my house, but on top of that, more pressure, I've got to get a cab from there to there. So I've took 20 pound out of my pocket Right out of my pocket, uh, which my mates give me. I took it out, got it 
got it in my pocket, so I said to the cab driver, he got all the details, my postcode, everything, he's taken me, yeah? So I'm going to give him my money first. It's only tenner. I'm going to give him my money first. Give him the money first. That's what I'll give him. A £20 note. He then says, that don't no longer exist. That's a paper one. They don't no longer stand. It's not currency. I went, you're joking. He went, yeah. He said, I can't take you because, I went, look, I'll give him my, he's got my address. And all of a sudden he went, Oh, I think I picked something up from you, from where you are. I know exactly where it is. So I'll take you. He took me there, and I got big gates, and the gates opened up. Brrr, let me go in, get another twenty pound note, and I just give it him. Yeah, but he's only ten. I just give him it because of the aggravation that I've caused him, and it was nice enough for him to take me. So you can imagine, it's more aggro that I've got to go three or four mile. If he don't take me, I'm in. A, I'm, I'm in a bad world. I'll get night bus, train. Then I've got to get another bus and then drop me off at the end, I've got to walk two mile, it's aggro. So thank you very much that cab driver, he was right behind me, I loved him for that. And when I come back, uh, I was in a bad way still, I mean I was so tired, you know, I've been there, what, I don't know, seven, eight hours, maybe nine hours, I'm tired man, I'm really tired, you know, shattered man. And you know, all screaming and shouting, and everything's going around, you're not getting out together, and I think to myself, I'm tired. So, I, I got in about what, eight o'clock, quarter, 12, no, quarter, 20 past nine, it's 20 past eight, nine o'clock, my probation opens up. I've got to phone my probation up and say, look, I can't make it today. I've been in hospital, uh, can you know, give me another, another day. I'm an IPP, IPP for now for 20 years nearly. Yeah. I haven't seen probation for 14 months, but I've been in probation for nearly 10 years. So, I'm sweet, you know what I mean? Yes, okay, uh, Mr. Hill, uh, I've been in touch with my, your probation officer, and, and anyway, they phoned me back. And they, I was under pressure. They phoned me back later on and said, look, we can't, what's been going on, Mr. Hill? Uh, where you been? And they didn't believe me, you know what I mean? You could see that they didn't believe me. He said, have you got paperwork to, to, to the fact that you've been in? I went, and I thought to myself, I've been on probation now for 10 years. 10 years. Never once... Have I missed my probation? Never once. Ten years. And he's putting pressure under me. Where you've been, what you've been doing. But I can't blame him. This is his job. It's his job. He's been told, I suppose, by someone higher than that. Why didn't I turn up? Where have I been? And this, that, and the other. This is not a new probation. My new probation officers, well, I've gone down there, and it's, there's no one there to see me, but they're telling me to come back the next week. So I thought myself, and all of a sudden, you're under more pressure. You just got over all that. And I think to myself, God, I don't need this, man. And I had to go back, I had to go to sleep, you know what I mean? I was tired. You know, the phone rung, I was like, just got up to make a cup of tea, someone knocked the door. I got up to make a cup of tea, whatever, well, quick chat to me. And, and you know, and, and, and I thought to myself, and then he phones me up and gives me that and says, okay, we'll let you know, notify you. Uh, can we get, have you got anything to prove that you was there? Well, what do you mean anything to prove that I was there? You only got to phone them up and they tell you. I didn't get no paperwork. I could have got the paper. I should have got the paperwork, actually. But I've got a thing around my wrist now. You know, that that thing that tells you what time you got there and this, that, and the other. So I'm going to take that there, you know. But it puts you under pressure. Why should you be under that much pressure? You've never, ever before let them down, probation. You're not a target. You're not nothing. All you do is keep out of their way. Don't cause no problems, you do everything they want you to do. You're always challenging your thoughts, you always look at the pros and cons, you look at everything they want you to do, you do, yeah? Triggers everything. And yet, they're asking you where you've been, what you've been, but I understand it's their job, yeah? But you think to yourself, Mikey, I've done 10 years, and then there's a new thing come out saying that IPPs now that are let out on parole have got to do five years of their parole, it's a new law coming out, I don't know if it's out yet, they're talking about it, but five years, I've done 10 years. So, you know, and I've seen people on the streets, people that I know, that are working, that probation has been squashed after three or four, after, well, not three or four years, after five years or six years. So, you know, why ain't I squashed now? It's, it's about time. I've got a bad heart, I'm, a, I'm not a kid no more. I don't do you know, gangsterism no more. I'm not a bad boy. I keep myself to myself. 
you know, and it's just guts you a little bit, you're trying to get my life, I'm writing a book, I'm doing my podcast, I don't cause no problems, and and yet, and they still put you put under a bit of pressure, pressure you don't need, and that kicks off other pressures, and before you know where you are, you're on a night out again. So that thing's now gone in the cupboard, I ain't gonna take that out at all. I'm not taking that out at all. It petrified the life at me using it four times a day. I was using it four times a day. You know, and because you're using it four times a day, it makes it worse. And then I bought oranges, apples, pears, plums, everything, yeah? And I'm not eat, I wasn't eating anything. I was just taking that. And then my mate said, oh, you can't eat oranges. You can't eat that, that citrus. You can't eat that, you can't eat this. In the end, you're going, what is going on? Well, you can't eat this, you can't eat that. You know what I mean? And, and yet when your kids, your mum, in them days, in the 50s, in the 40s, they cooked you stews, they cooked you things, bread and butter puddings, bread puddings, bacon rolls, bacon and onion rolls, rabbit, mutton stews, everything that was so good for you, yeah? You know what I mean? And what we are is, I'm going to get one of them things you put your food into, them, them things you put food into and it cooks the food. I'm going to get one of those, yeah, and put rabbit in there, and like rabbit stews and all that, yeah? Um, I can't look after myself, I'm a big boy, I've been in prison a long time, uh, and been in prison a long time, you get to look after yourself, yeah? I'm always clean my flat, I'm always doing things you should do, yeah? Make your bed, change your bed, all that down, do everything what, what you should do, yeah? Anyway, um, thanks again for everybody uh, on, on my on my uh, YouTube, who's uh, wished me all the best, and uh, I'm still here, I ain't gonna go nowhere, mate, I'm here forever. Anyway, uh, thanks again. And this is Bang Bang Rail. Please press the like button and subscribe. And again, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Yeah?